just for looked like it was just to the front of Luke Lachey there. Wasn't yeah. a forward pass there by much, but I think that was a forward pass. Yeah, I couldn't tell from here. I was filling out some stats, but uh, I'll take your word for it on this one. Yep. And the rest would too. Third down and six. Two receivers split out left and right. Davis at James's right hip. Third down and six. Motion Culp. James takes a snap. Handoff middle to Davis. He's stuffed behind the line of scrimmage, trying to fight his way past the 45. He does get to the 44, but that's only a one-yard gain on, th on third and six, and it's now fourth down. And the Bobcats will send out the punt team. Yeah, that's a problem for this team is uh, we don't have a big threat on third and medium to long. No, Granby does not. Down. So that will be an issue. Andre Ash standing at the 14-yard line to return for the Barons. McCormick takes a snap, sends an end-over-end -end kick near side. It bounces at the 20 and rolls out of bounds near the 16. And that's where the Barons will begin field position. We'll have starting field position. Buckeye Valley, they, they have a two-quarterback system. They've alternated duties between Andy Anthony and Anthony Hughes. Anthony, Andy Anthony, that is, was 9 for 14 last week for 72 yards, and Hughes was 5 for 9 with 54 yards. So you can expect to see that today as this is their system. It is Andy Anthony in the shotgun. Andre Ash in the backfield. Two receivers stacked to the right, one wide to the left. Anthony takes a shotgun snap. He hands it to Andre Ash. Ash has, tries to find a seam left, does get some room as he does get up to maybe the 22-yard line there. And it's second down and medium. Charlie James, Alfie Sterniker, and Joey Bertani. Three seniors in on the tackle for the, Bobcat, for the Bobcats in their final home game. Second down and four for Buckeye Valley. Their first drive of the game, no score, at their own 22-yard line. Ash under center in the I formation. Two receivers stacked to the right, one to the left. A, hand, a handoff straight up the middle. Doesn't have much room. Is good containment by the Cats' defensive front for a gain of, of about only a yard or two on the play. And it's third and short for the Barons. It looks like it's third and two. 9.30 left here in the first half, in the first quarter. Grandview and Buckeye Valley tied no score. Grandview is five and two. Valley is 0-7. And, and on third and two, they put Andy Anthony in the shotgun with Andre Ash in the backfield. Two receivers stacked to the right, one wide to the left. And on third and two, a handoff straight up the middle to Andre Ash. He's hit at the 25. Looks like he got to the 26. He did, and the Barons get a first down. Yeah, uh, earlier this week I talked to Luke Lachey, asked him a couple questions about Buckeye Valley. He said they're a lot better than the record indicates and in that they're on a similar offense to the Bobcats with a lot of running but also some bubble screens, a lot of short passes. And this is a Division Three team that has played a D1 school, Delaware Hayes. So this team has faced some stiff competition, and you cannot overlook this Buckeye Valley team. 8.48 left here in the first quarter. First and 10 for the Barons at their own 26-yard line. Buckeye Valley still in the huddle. And they break the huddle with two receivers stacked to the left this time, one wide to the right. And... Andy Anthony in the pistol, and before the, s the ball is snapped, a whistle blows. And yeah. Timeout is called there by the Barons. So they couldn't get everyone set there. Yeah, they took a long time getting to the line. and uh, Saw the ref and d uh, the deep ref counting down, and that's when their coach decided to call a timeout. Yeah, and meanwhile, it's a very beautiful night here. Th this is finally football weather, Calvin. As that it is. It's our first game where it's actually – been like somewhat cold. There's been some, there is definitely a chill in the air. It's jacket weather all around. It is jacket weather all around as, 
is because Buckeyes have a game at 8.30 tonight against the Northwestern Wildcats. Looks like some people have, have stayed home. As guess, guess what we brought a second computer in for tonight, Calvin? A little bit of Buckeye tracking on the yeah, side. Yeah, double game day. Don't blame the Buckeyes for this. They want no part of this. They, they've said they'd never host a Friday night game. I don't even think Northwestern wants to be in this, but... Yep. First and 10 for the Barons at their own 26-yard line. Andre Ash in the shotgun. He takes a snap. He's rolling to his right. He's looking down the field, throws down the sideline, and it is picked off. Trey Cook with the interception. And the Bobcats get their first takeaway of the game. That's nice interception there by Trey Cook jumping the route there. And the Bobcats will have the ball inside the Buckeye Valley 35-yard line. First and 10 for the Bobcats at the Buckeye Valley 34-yard line. Three receivers wide to the right, Luke Lachey wide to the left. Davis at James' right hip. James calls for the snap a couple times, pitches it to Davis. He runs outside, breaks a tackle, he dives his way to the 30, and he lunges to the 29-yard line for a five-yard gain. Very solid first down play for the yep. Bobcats. Let's see if the Bobcats can, can continue to march the ball down the field here. Three receivers wide to the left. That's Mott, Culp, and Sterniker. Luke Lachey wide to the right. Davis in the backfield with Charlie James. And on second and five, James takes a shotgun snap, hands it off to Davis. He is stuffed behind the line of scrimmage and thrown down. Looked like he almost lost the football there, but he dove back on it. But not before he's brought down for a two-yard loss. Yeah, this Buckeye Valley team, they're a large team for sure. And uh, our, our line could not, not push them one bit there. And yep. led to a two-yard loss. Third down and seven for the Bobcats at the third down. Yeah, third down and seven for the Bobcats at the Buckeye Valley 31 yard line. Five receivers, three of them wide to the left. James in an empty set. He sends Davis in motion. He takes a snap. A handoff on the end around to Davis. Davis looking for the corner. He's to the 30, and he stumbles his way to the 27 yard line. He's short of the first down. And Calvin, I think Bob, the Bobcats have to go for it here. Yeah, it's. Uh Fourth and very manageable. Fourth and about three. Uh, no man's land for sure, so. This is four down territory here, especially in high school. 6.30 left in the first half. Grandview and Buckeye Valley tied no score. Grandview has their offense out on the field. They're going to go for it. And Bobcats break the huddle. They, they line up two receivers split out each direction. Davis at... At James's right hip. Valley showing blitz. They almost jumped and a flag flies, but they're going to get the Bobcats for a false start here. As looks like the Bobcats caused Buckeye Valley to jump there. That's a huge penalty on fourth and three. Yeah. It makes it fourth and eight. I don't know. That was weird because it looked like a Bo uh, Buckeye Valley almost jumped, but then. After that, they called a... Maybe the Bobcats caused Buckeye Valley to react there. That's, that's what possible. they're calling. If In that case, it would have been a very late flag, but... Fourth down and eight for the Bobcats at the Buckeye Valley 32-yard line. Same formation, two receivers split out each direction. Davis in the backfield with James. James takes a snap. He's back to throw. He's being chased. He's rolling to his right. He's out of time. He's to the 30, and he's pushed out of bounds at the 27. That's short of the first down, and Buckeye Valley takes over on downs. Yeah, there was a a free release on the on the left side, and they had a man coming right at Charlie from the start, unblocked, and uh, Charlie did his best to um, make a play out of it, but he sure still, did. Still well short of the line. Yep. And after that play, it's it's first and ten, Buckeye Valley at their own 29-yard line. 
The receivers are lined up, but the line and the quarterback and the running backs, they, they were still in the huddle. Andy Anthony in the pistol. He takes a snap. He designed run up the middle, and he is stuffed at the 30-yard line there as it looks like Matthew Taylor in on the tackle for Grandview Heights for what looks to be a one-yard gain. Second down and nine for the Barons at their own 30. 5-10 left here in the first quarter. Grandview and Buckeye Valley tied at nothing. Andy Anthony in the shotgun with Andre Ash in the backfield. Anthony's in the pistol, rather. He takes a snap. He's back to throw. Looks, throws right. It's caught at the 35. Receiver turns up field, and he dives to the 37-yard line, just shy of the first down, and it's third and short for the Barons. That was Anthony Hughes, Buckeye Valley's other quarterback, who's also a receiver making the catch there. And it's third and three. Third down and three. Andy Anthony in the shotgun with Ash in the backfield. Bobcats showing blitz. There's some movement. Grandview almost jumped. Buckeye Valley looks over to the sideline for the play call. They change the play. And on third down and three, Ash takes a shotgun snap and hands it up off the middle to... Andre Ash, and he is shy of the first down, and it's fourth and short. Yeah. Uh, Looks like Darion Davis was in on the tackle there. Bobcats had a good push of the line, and uh, Ash had a nice spin move to get a couple yards out of it, but he is short, and their offense is still on the field. Yep, Barron still have their offense on the field. Andy Anthony, the quarterback, goes up to his lineman. Presumably gives them the play call. And it looks like they're going to, they at least have the offense out on the field. They're putting him in the shotgun, in the pistol here. Anthony takes a snap. A they fumble the ball. Either way, the Bobcats have the ball. But I, I didn't see, it looked like the Bobcats got it there. Even though it's a moot point because... Grammy would have had the ball anyways, but it looks like Trey Cook coming came out with the football there. That's his, his second takeaway yeah, of the game. Second. Or they credit the they credit the fumble recovery to Jake Zimmerman there. I saw Trey Cook walk out of there with the football, but nevertheless, the Bobcats have first and ten at the Buckeye Valley 36. Two receivers split out left and right for Granby Heights. Davis in the shotgun with Charlie James. He takes a snap. Bobcats go with the reverse. Here's Luke Lachey on the right side. He's to the 35-30. 25, breaks a tackle to the 20, and he stays on his feet and dives to the 16-yard line. Oh, a little razzle-dazzle there for Grandview Heights. And the Bobcats get a big play on first and 10. Yeah, just what the, just what the Bobcats needed. Uh, trick play. Uh, they've had good, pretty good pressure on the run all day, and... What better way to avoid that than to reverse field like that? First and 10 for the Bobcats at the Barron 16 yard line. James in the shotgun, two receivers split out wide to the left. A handoff middle to Davis, he's to the 15, he's at the 10, still on his feet, he's pushed back, but that's a good run for Davis on first, in, on first down at the 16 yard line, and the Bobcats are inside the Buckeye Valley 10, as it looks like we have an injured Barron on the field there. And while he's being tended to, we'll take a quick timeout here. 2.35 left in the first quarter. Grandview and Buckeye Valley tied no score. You're watching a presentation of Bobcats football on ghathletics.org.
2.35 left in the first quarter. Grandview nothing, Buckeye Valley nothing. Second down and four for the Bobcats at the Barons' 10-yard line. Sterniker the wing on the right. Davis in the backfield with Charlie James, three receivers. Charlie takes a snap. He throws it right side for Luke Lachey into the end zone. The double coverage, he had it, and then the ball got knocked loose. Incomplete pass. Yeah, it looked like Luke had, uh, Luke had the had the catch, but then uh, another Bucky, Buckeye Valley defender flew in with a yeah. big hit. Luke Lachey almost with a Randy Moss type of play there. And then a, the second Buckeye Valley cornerback just jarred the ball loose, and it's now third and four. Some fans were booing, thinking maybe he, maybe he got yeah he did get decked there. But at any rate, third down and four for the Bobcats at the Buckeye Valley ten. Trips wide to the right, Luke Lachey wide to the left. Davis in the backfield with James. James fumbles the snap. He dives back on it at the 13-yard line, and it's now fourth and seven. Alert play by James there to get back on the ball. And the Bobcats, there looks like they'll go for it here on fourth and eight at the Buckeye Valley 14. I do think they could attempt to kick. It's I, towards the edge of Halley's range, but yep, looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field here. For the second time today, the Bobcats are going for it on fourth down. Two receivers split out each direction. Davis at James's right hip, and a whistle blows. Timeout called by the Bobcats. Well, a big fourth and eight coming here, Calvin. And mm -hmm. what do you do here? Do you try and get Lachey one on one? Do you want to have James run around and maybe find find some space and run to the, and run to the end zone? Or I don't know. This is a tough decision. Because uh, if you're Buckeye Valley, you're thinking throw here, right? Yeah, for for sure. Uh, and I want to trust our run game with uh, Buckeye Valley's had. Most of our runs are pretty swamped. We've had a few medium gain runs besides the reverse, but uh, Darion still hasn't busted loose a 10-plus yard gain yet, as he often does. So we shall see. And indeed, we shall see as Bobcats send their offense out on the field. That's Mont and Cope wide to the left, and that's Luke Lachey and Glenn Cribbs wide to the right. Charlie in the shotgun with Davis at his right hip. Cat's going for it. And on fourth and eight, James calls the snap a couple times. He takes it, throws over the middle to Lachey. He has it, lost it, oh, incomplete. Man. I have no idea how they did not call interference on that play. A lot of contact on that play. A lot of contact, a lot of very early contact. But the flags stay in the pockets. And Buckeye Valley gets away with one there. And the Bobcats once again come up short on fourth down. Still no score here. 134 left here in the first frame. Buckeye Valley has the ball first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Andy Anthony in the shotgun with Ash in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the right, one wide near side to the left. Anthony takes a snap. He hands it off to Ash. Ash cuts it back. He's to the 15. May have gotten to the 16 there for a, a marginal gain on first down. Yeah, Bobcats have done a really good job of smothering those runs up the middle, as Buckeye Valley have done to the Bobcats, so. So that's a two yard carry for Andre Ash, and it's second down and eight for the Barons. Just a hair over one minute left here in the first quarter. Barons offense looking over to the sideline for the play call. Anthony, real Relays the call to his lineman, and he's in the shotgun. Two receivers stacked to the left, one wide to the right. He sends a man in motion. He takes a snap. He hands it off on the end round. He cuts up field. He's to the 15, and he didn't get much after cutting it back there. He probably only got one or two yards on the play, and it's now third down. Yeah, he has uh, 35. It's only the first play we've seen him in, but he has a lot of acceleration, you can tell, right away from him. 27 seconds left in the first quarter. Buckeye Valley still in the huddle. And it appears that the Barons might run out, might let the clock run out here 
and take it into the second quarter, and that they'll do, and that they'll do. Well, in the first quarter, Cats failed on two fourth downs. Great bend, but in, but don't break defense for the Barons, as we have no score at the end of the first quarter. Mm -hmm. You're watching a presentation of Bobcats football on ghathletics.org. Stay tuned. Barron's going from left to right here on third down and third down and six of their own 18-yard line. Anthony takes the shotgun snap. He looks, throws right. It's caught at the 25. He's pushed out of bounds, but the Barons got the first down. And they'll have it first and ten at their own 25-yard line. Murphy Horning back here with Calvin Horning. His final home game is Grandview Bobcat and our producer, John Sterniker. Bobcats, or Barons, break the huddle. Anthony in the pistol. Two receivers wide, far side to the left, one bottom to the right. A quarterback draw. He's to the 25-30, and he dives to the 36-yard line. Good job by... Andy Anthony looking down the field, weaving his way between tackles. And he got another first down for the Barons. And Buckeye Valley is in business. Yeah, it's been a very defensive game. And uh, most, most of the first downs have come on just like a couple plays that snuck through the defense like that and the trickeration by the Bobcats. Anthony in the pistol once again. A high snap, he juggles it, he runs left, and he is bottled up at the 35-yard line as Bobcats got him behind the line of scrimmage, and that is a two-yard loss. Yeah, that could have been disastrous for the uh, for Buckeye Valley. Sure could have. Finally, he managed to catch it after a couple of bobbles and uh, saved saved a turnover or an even bigger loss of yards. Second down and 12 for the Barons at their own 35 yard line. Trips wide to the right, two receivers short side to the left. Anthony takes a shotgun snap. He looks, throws over the, throws left side, it's caught. Receiver breaks a tackle and he spins his way to the 44 yard line, three yards shy of the first down and that makes it third down and short. Sterniker and Dobie is credited with the tackle on the play. Third down and three for the Barons at their own 44-yard line. Anthony in the pistol with Ash in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the left, one bottom of your screen to the right. Anthony takes a snap. He keeps it, rolls to his right. He's being chased, throws across his body. It's almost intercepted there by Trey Cook. That was all. He nearly had the hat trick there as... He could have ran for a while after he, if he was able to pick that off. Yeah, what a game for Trey Cook so far. Two, two turnovers and uh, almost another one, but a deflection on the pass. and Very good defense by Trey. It'll force a punt. And Andre Ash will punt here on fourth down and three. Bobcats punt returners are at the 28-yard line. That's 
Charlie James near side of the 28 as a timeout is called on the field here. We'll take a timeout ourselves. 9.25 left in the second quarter. Grandview and Buckeye Valley tied no score. We'll be right back. Fourth down and three, Buckeye Valley to punt. Andre Ash standing at his own 29-yard line, far hash of the field. Davis and Luke Lachey, or Charlie James rather, back to return for the Bobcats. He sends it middle, middle of the field. It bounces at the 32, takes a slight sideways roll, and it's down to the 32-yard line. We'd like to give thanks to our sponsors, Nikki Evans with Coldwell Banker King Thompson, First Merchants Bank, Naughty Pine Brewing Company, Grandview Insurance, Nurture the Salon, State Tire and Service, and Raising Canes. And if you go to the Ohio State hockey game versus Omaha at 5 p.m. tomorrow at the Schottenstein Center and the Buckeyes score a goal on the power play, you'll get a free chicken tender. First and 10 for the Bobcats of their own 33-yard line. Charlie James in the shotgun, two receivers wide to the right, one wide to the left. Hand off middle to Davis. Davis bounces left. He's to the 40. First down, stiff arm 50. Down the sideline, 45. And they really stepped out of bounds at the Buckeye Valley, 48. Davis was trying to tightrope tight the sideline. He did that pretty well for a while, but his toe just slipped out of bounds at the Buckeye Valley, 48. But, but still a 19-yard gain. And Darion with a pretty awesome stiff arm there. En route to a 19-yard game. Two receivers split out wide to the left, one short side to the left. To the, two wide to the right, rather. I messed that up. As James rolling to his right, he's to the 40, he's to the 35, and he barrels his way down to the 34. A good, quick run there by Charlie James. And the Bobcats get their second first down of the drive, and they're inside the Buckeye Valley 35-yard line. They're at the 33. Yeah, and those are the types of plays that the Cats will need. A lot of outside runs, like the last two. Two receivers wide to the right, one wide to the left. Davis in the backfield with James. Hand off to Davis. Davis burst of speed, 25, and he's upended down to the 23, and that's another Grandview Heights first down. Eight and a half minutes left here in the second quarter. Grandview and Buckeye Valley tied, no score. First down. Actually, it's second down in, a, in about 18 inches here. James in the shotgun with Davis in the backfield. Charlie takes a snap, looks, throws left into one one coverage, looking for Luke Lachey. He leaps, and did he come down with it? Yes, he did! Touchdown, Grandview Heights. Luke Lachey, a 23-yard leaping touchdown. And the Bobcats draw first blood. It's 6-0, Grandview Heights. Just a ridiculous catch by... Unbelievable. Well, we've been waiting for Luke Lachey to have a breakout game. This might be his night. Mason Gustazi to kick here for the Bobcats. Snap back, hold down. The kick is up. It's a line drive kick, and it just got over the crossbar. It's good, and the Bobcats take a 7 to nothing lead. Yeah, that, uh, that ball was right kicked at an angle about, like, 20 degrees maximum, but <laughs> it cleared the bar, and that's what counts. 
Yeah, the kick almost had white paint on it, though, but it gets the job done as the Bobcats lead 7 0. Explain that, that geometric reference there. Like, like, what's the difference between kicking a ball at a 20 degree angle, a 45 degree angle? It's just, a, it's just a lot lower. It's like a line drive instead of a pop fly. Okay. Your baseball people out there. Okay, so most line drive hits in baseball, the bat hits the ball at 20 degrees. Uh, well, uh, not necessarily, but okay. <laughs> we're, but you said a 20 degree we're, kick we're is more of a. now, okay. <laughs> Any of my math people out there, you all will understand. Yeah, you guys can chime in. <laughs> Matthew Taylor to kick off here for the Bobcats. Buckeye Valley has three receivers back at the t three returners back at the ten yard line to return. Taylor kicks a bouncing ball left side. It bounces. They have it at the 32. He bounces off the tackle and he's ridden out of bounds at the 30 yard line. And that's where. The Barons will take over. Yeah, probably a, a negative two yard return for the Barons. Those bouncing kicks can be tough. They can be tough. I feel like it's like a 75% chance that they get bobbled. First down and 10 for the Barons at their own 31 yard line. Anthony in the shotgun with Ash in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the left, one wide short side to the right. Anthony takes a snap, handoff middle to Ash. Ash doesn't have a lot of room, but he does drive the legs and get up to the 35-yard line. So that's, that's a good run on first down with no hole there. Yeah, he did a, a great job of pushing the pile there. So Ash gets four on the play, and it's second and six. As Matthew Taylor made the tackle there. Buckeye Valley in the pistol with, Anth with Anthony in front of Ash. Two receivers wide to the left. Anthony takes a snap, a handoff middle to Ash. He's hit at the 35. Second effort, nothing doing as he is stood up for no gain. As that's Connor Dobies. And it looks like Ian Gesha in on the tackle. Yeah, the, the D-line's done a great job so far. Of, uh, so how about the freshman Gesha getting getting some time as being on the left side of the D-line there? Anthony takes the snap. He pumps. He rolls to his left. He has some room. He's to the 35-40. First down, and he veers out of bounds at the 43-yard line, but he got the first down. As a blitz... Came up empty there for Grandview Heights. As Andy Anthony with an eight-yard scamper, a smart play, and the Barons have first and ten at their own 43. Yeah, there was no one there to, no QB spy or anything. Nope. So he just rolled out and scrambled for an easy eight-yard first down. They put Anthony in an empty set here with three receivers split out wide to the right, two wide short side to the left. Anthony takes a snap, quarterback draw. He's to the 45 and he leans his way to the 48 yard line on a designed quarterback run there. And it's second and five. Make that second and six. Second down and six for Buckeye Valley. Three receivers split out wide to the right, two wide to the left. Anthony takes a snap. Another quarterback draw. He runs right tackle. He's to the 50. He's hit at the 48, and he's close to the marker. One of the officials looked like he was going to stop the clock to move the change, it but looks like he short. looks like he retracted his decision there as he's one yard short. Back-to-back -back favorable spots for the Bobcats, I would say. And you think that this is four down territory on third and one inside Grandview territory here. Third yeah. down and one. Anthony in the shotgun. Three receivers wide to the right, 
too wide to the left. And on third and one, Anthony takes a snap, almost, almost went to his right, but he's to the 35, breaks a tackle 30, 25, 20, one man to beat, and Luke Lachey pushes him out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. It's first and goal, Buckeye Valley. Thirty-eight yard run for Anthony. As he is ruled out of bounds at the Grandview ten yard line. Five oh five left here in the second quarter. Grandview seven, Buckeye Valley nothing. And on first and goal, the Barons break the huddle. Looks like they have a triple eye formation. The Maryland eye here with one receiver wide to the right. They have Another quarterback here, as there's not much there on the far side, as the tackle is made there by, looks like, that was Andy Anthony in that running back there, as, as they do like to rotate quarterbacks, that was Anthony Hughes who took the snap there. So that play did not work out for a two-yard loss, and it's second and goal for Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 12-yard line. This is and goal, so they'll need to reach the goal line. Yep. To and they put Anthony Hughes under center with three men in the backfield, two of them split. Bobcats look like they're selling out against the run here. It's a pitch to the outside, and he is flung down at the 20. As Andy Anthony, who's played quarterback most of this game, tried to find some room, and if he slips past that first wave of tacklers, he may have scored a touchdown, but he did not. And that's a seven-yard loss. And all of a sudden, it's third and goal at the Grandview 19-yard line. Yeah. Uh, and again, Trey Cook with the tackle. He is all over the field right now. Yeah, he's definitely been the MVP so far. Big time. Third and goal for the Barons at the Grandview 19. Three receivers split out wide to the left. Anthony in the gun. One wide to the right. Anthony takes a shotgun snap. A flag flies. He pumps. Throws towards the goal line. Pass knocked down by Charlie James. Incomplete. We'll check the flag. Looks like it may be an offside. And we're calling a sideline warning. Sideline warning. No, f no penalty. No penalty yardage. And it's fourth and goal at the 19-yard line. This is where you wonder uh, about Buckeye Valley's kicking game. I, I didn't pay any attention to their kickers and warm up so. From here, it's 36 yards. Do not know their range. There. And they, they, they shift a bunch of guys. and it Looks like they're going to kick a field goal. Or a and that it, ap it appears that that is what they will do. 36-yard attempt here. Felipe Scharf to attempt the field goal here. Hughes to hold. Snap back, hold down. The kick is up. It's end over end toward the uprights, and it is good. He got it. Wow. A 36-yard kick there by Scharf. That was an impressive kick. It had the accuracy. It had good distance. Yeah, that could have gone another five. Another five, seven yard, probably could have been a 45 yarder, good. Yep. Very nice kick. Very nice indeed. As Buckeye Valley gets on the scoreboard, 3.14 left here in the, second ha in the second quarter. We have to give another plug to our sponsors, Nikki Evans with Coldwell Banker King Thompson, First Merchants Bank, Naughty Pine Brewing Company right down the street on 3rd Avenue, Grandview Insurance, Nurture the Salon on the corner of 3rd and Grandview Avenue. State Tire and Service and Raising Canes. Again, if you go if you go to Ohio State men's hockey games and the Buckeyes score on the power play, you get a free chicken tender. So, you like hockey, you like cane. Yeah, just one tender, though. But hey, it's free, though, so you can't pass it up. If you stay home for that game... If you stay home for that game, you can hear Murphy Horning announce it on Scarlet and Gray Student Radio. 
That's a oh, 5 o'clock face-off. Sorry to interrupt you there, but that's a 5 o'clock face-off against Omaha. Buckeyes hockey playing tonight right, right at the shot as we speak. And another onside kick. This time it gets past the 50, and Buckeye Valley recovered it. Yeah, uh, really. Perfectly executed. Yeah, um, the Bobcats just didn't know what they were doing there. A bunch of players ran away from the ball, it looked like. kind of uh, They just didn't know what to do, and no one was aware enough to dive onto the ball. And it just rolled beyond, uh, just ro rolled beyond the 10-yard mark, and... Buckeye Valley ball. And I believe that was Brian Perrine who recovered the kicker who recovered his own kick there. But right after the field goal, it's first and ten at midfield for Buckeye Valley. Andy Anthony back at quarterback here. Thru trips wide to the right, too wide to the left. Anthony in an empty set. Will he run a draw here? He does just that. He's up the middle. He's to the 45, and he leans back to about the 43. Yeah, uh, second onside kick in, a, uh, in two kicks for Buckeye Valley. Second down and four for Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 44. 2.44 left in the second quarter. Grandview leads 7-3. Anthony goes to his lineman, presumably gives them the play. One receiver wide to left. They snap it to the halfback. He's... To the 41, he's stuffed at the 40, but he got the first down as he continued to push his way to the 38. So, some exotic play calling here by the Barons. That's Andre Ash taking the direct snap there. Yeah, uh, both these teams have used uh, some tri tricky plays so far to make progress. And just another example of that. First and 10 for Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 39-yard line. Anthony in the shotgun with Ash in the backfield. Two receivers split out left and right. He takes a snap. Quick throw right, and he is cut down at the 41-yard line by Charlie James. As that was Anthony Hughes, the receiver slash quarterback who is tackled for the loss there. And it's second down and about 13. Yeah, uh... He really threw a, a bullet pass there. Very, very speed, like a sidearm fastball. Anthony in the gun here. He takes a snap, bobbles it, but he quick throw right to Andre Ash, and he dives down to the 37 yard line for a marginal gain on second down and 13, and it's third down for Buckeye Valley. Yeah, and the clock is running down. Uh, Quickly now. 110 left. And no, no sense of urgency here from, from the Barons as the clock continues to tick. Under one minute left here in the first frame. They're taking a long time to get this play call in here. And finally, Buckeye Valley calls a timeout with 51 seconds left here in the second quarter. Yeah, uh, this is some unorthodox clock management. This has been an unorthodox drive in general. The onside kick, the the snap to the running back, and they take too long to get a play call in. Yeah, it's been uh, a lot of different, very mixed bags. So yep. And this is a this is a full time out here. It's, they really must have not known what the play call was there, but yeah, uh, a weird sequence of events here. And the referee tells tells the Barons to hur come on, hurry up, hurry up, and they get out of the timeout. Fifty one seconds left here in the second quarter. Grandview seven, Buckeye Valley three. 
Big third and eight here with 51 seconds left here in the first, in the second quarter. Anthony in the shotgun, two receivers left and right. Anthony calls for snap, calls again, looks over to the sideline, changes the play at the line of scrimmage. He's back in the shotgun, and he takes a shotgun snap. He's being pressured, steps up in the pocket. He has no room, and he is cut down at the Grandview 39-yard line for a sack. And now the Bobcats call a timeout with 29 seconds left. Whoa, what? Actually, we have, an, we have an injured player on the field near the 25-yard line. Is that, I believe that's Corey Culp. Corey Culp, the junior, listed as a running back and a defensive back down the field. Offensively, he's played primarily wide receiver. Had some, he's had some nice touchdown passes. Uh, this year. Hope he's alright. And Barron again in the huddle here. And here we go. Let's let's see what they do here. The clock runs. 27, 26, 25. Andy Anthony is in the shotgun, and the Barons are go are going to go for it here. At least that's what the formation indicates. They may just run out the clock. Is Anthony looked like he was going to be under center there, but he moves back into the shotgun. He's just walking, talking to his linemen, and. <laughs> They call a timeout with four seconds left. What is going on here, Calvin? You'd have to think that they, they're just killing time to throw a Hail Mary. But why did they call it? Why, why did they just run the clock down and snap the ball with four seconds left? I don't know. Yeah, this has been. Uh... I mean, had the injury timeout to discuss a play, and then. Yeah, this has been a wild, uh, wild last couple minutes. Been Ever weird. Since they uh, attempted the onside kick and and recovered. They had a wild pat to the fullback. Um, a couple interesting clock management decisions. And the referee tells the Barons to hurry up. They, their players are running back to the football at the 38-yard line. It's fourth and nine at the Grandview 38. This is the final play of the first half. Five receivers on the field. Three of them split out wide to the left. Cats have a four-man line there. Looked like those linemen were showing blitz. And a timeout called by Grandview Heights. Would you believe it? Yeah, this is getting kind of ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a hail mary. You just throw the ball down the field. Yeah, this would be a TV producer's dream. Get all that. Although maybe, because it looked like some of the Bobcats D linemen were showing blitz there. Maybe he just wants his players to hang back and defend the pass. Yeah, I mean, there's four seconds left, so you'll, all you have to do is prevent prevent a touchdown. So. give you a quick summary. First quarter, no scoring. Cats got the ball deep into Buckeye Valley territory, but they came up with no dice as Buckeye Valley had two fourth down stops. Luke Lachey had a wonderful play on a 23-yard Randy Moss-type touchdown reception in the end zone there. Yeah, very nice play by Luke. Shows why he's a four-star recruit headed to the University of Iowa. And Felipe Scharf knocked through a 36-yard field goal, and that's the last scoring of this game for Buckeye Valley, the only scoring for that matter. Five, five receivers, three trips wide to the left, one wide to the right. 
Ash moves as a receiver to the right. Anthony takes a snap. He's backpedaling. He steps up. He throws a bomb down the right side in double coverage. It's knocked down incomplete. Very good. I defense. thought the receiver there for Buckeye Valley may have had a chance there, but nice play there by the Bobcats. Yeah, just maybe just a little underthrown and uh and Glenn Cribbs made a real nice play on the ball, deflected it away, and that'll end the half. And Calvin, it's stats time. Yeah, give me one second to Calvin just formulating all the passing totals. Uh, yeah, so uh, here we go. Pretty uh, slow half offensively. Uh, a lot of runs, uh, slow drives, but uh, teams were very, very even. Bobcats finished with 82 rushing yards. Uh, 43 from Darion Davis, our leading rusher. And uh, Buckeye Valley finished with 87 rushing yards. Uh, Anthony had 65 rushing yards, much of it coming on that 38-yard scamper to the 10. And they also finished with, Anthony also finished with, uh, he was five for, five of nine for 26 yards and one interception. And Charlie James, he was one of four with the only completion being the 23 yard touchdown to, uh, to Luke Cliche. I think the, the biggest storyline as far as the stats go so far are is that the Buckeye Valley have run 29 plays compared to the Bobcats 16. So they've dominated possession in this game. Bobcats haven't had many long drives, so we'll see how that plays out in the second half. Thank you, Calvin. We'll be back in about 20 minutes. Grandview leads 7-3. We hope you stay tuned for the start of the second half. You've been watching a presentation of Bobcats football on ghathletics.org.
Back here for the start of the second half, Murphy Horning alongside Calvin Horning and John Sterniker. It's senior night here at Bobcat Stadium on a cool, crisp, beautiful fall night. This is what football is all about. Grandview leads Buckeye Valley 7-3 in a very defensive first half. Buckeye, or Buckeyes. Grandview and Buckeye Valley played some classic bend but don't break defense. Luke Lachey had a big touchdown reception. Buckeye Valley had a field goal. And that's where we stand. Buckeye Valley won the coin toss. They deferred to the second half, and they'll get the ball here. Matthew Taylor to kick off for Grandy Heights. Three men back for the Barons to return inside their 15-yard line. Taylor kicks a line drive kick, a head high snag up the middle. He's to the 35, he's to the 40, and he dives to the 42 yard line. So decent starting field position for the Barons on first down. And that's where the Barons will start. First and 10 at their own 42 yard line. Anthony in the shotgun with Ash in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the left, one wide to the right. A handoff to Ash. Ash doesn't have a lot of room as he stood up at the 43-yard line. And it's second down and nine. And Bobcats defense picks up right where it left off. A nice stuff up the middle. Yep. Second down and nine for the Bobcats, for, for the Barons at their own 43-yard line. 7-3 the score. Grandview enters this game 5-2. Buckeye Valley looking for the first win on the year. Anthony under center. I formation. Two receivers stacked to the right. Hand off to the tailback Ash. He is walled up at the 45-yard line after a two-yard gain there. And it's third and seven. Joey Bertani with the stop there for Grandview Heights. Third down and seven for the Barons at their own 45-yard line. Just a minute into the third quarter here. Anthony in the shotgun. Two receivers wide to the right. Three receivers split out wide to the left. Anthony takes the shotgun snap. He's back to throw. Throws over the middle. It's caught near the sticks. And that's a first down for Buckeye Valley. Luke Lachey with the tackle. Yeah, very nice throw by yep. Anthony. But not before Brock Buckler gets the first down reception for the Barons. First and 10, Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 47-yard line. This is the first drive of the second half. Two receivers stacked to the left, one wide to the right. You have a wing on the right, and Anthony's in the pistol formation. A high snap. He snags it. He runs right. He's to the 50. Breaks a tackle, 45. I thought I saw a flag fly, but he might have gone the first down there. He's inside the 40-yard line. Looked like he was just short. But what a play by Anthony. And I did not see a flag there. To make something out of absolutely nothing. What a play by, there by Anthony. That was almost a disastrous play. He had trouble with the snap, but... He rolled to his right, and he got eight yards out of that play. Yeah, they had some good protection on that edge, and he was able to slide up the sideline. Second down and two for Buckeye Valley at the Bobcat 39-yard line. Anthony in the pistol with Ash in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the left. A wing on the right. Another high snap. A handoff to Ash. Ash at the 40. He is stuffed by Glenn Cribbs. And it looks like Joey Bertani at the 40-yard line for a one-yard loss. It's third and three. That's scored as a two-yard loss there. And yeah. it's third down and four. They've been really good against uh, Ash, their fullback. He's uh, averaging just over two yards per carry so far, so uh, they have not been effective running him up the middle. No, they have not. 
And they put Anthony in an empty set here. Trips wide, short side to the right, too wide to the left. Catch showing blitz. Anthony takes a shotgun snap. Quick throw right, diving attempt incomplete. Almost a very nice catch, but just couldn't keep hold of it. And falls incomplete. The receiver dove for that ball, just couldn't pull it in as that pass stretched him too far to the right. And let's see what the Barons do here on fourth and three. Yeah, this I is see also, Andy Anthony, the quarterback, still on the field here. This is that no man's land. So is Andre Ash, and the Barons are going for it. Two receivers split out each direction. Ash. At Anthony's right hip. Anthony takes the shotgun snap. He's in the pocket. He steps up. He is tackled at the 39-yard line by Davis. He's shy of the first down. And the Bobcats take over on downs. Huge play for the Bobcats there. As he stopped about two yards short of the line. Connor Doby is also credited with the tackle there. But a big stop on the opening drive for the Bobcats. And Grandview has decent field position. First and 10 at their own 49. 824 left here in the first quarter. Charlie James in the gun with Davis in the backfield. Two receivers split out left and right. James calls for the snap. Calls again. Takes a snap and hands it off middle to Davis. He's hit at the line. Second effort may have got him back to the, to, to the, to the initial line of scrimmage. For no gain. Yeah, and uh, the especially early, the uh, especially early the Buckeye Valley did a good job of stopping Davis. Yep. And his last couple of runs before this, he had some uh, broke out for some yards, but they stopped him again there. Second down and 10 for the Bobcats at their own 39-yard line. James in the gun, trips wide to the left, one wide bottom of your screen to the right. Davis in the backfield. James takes a shotgun snap, swings it left to Luke Lachey. Luke Lachey trying to find some room. He's to the 40, and he reaches to the 42-yard line. That's all he can get as it's third down. We'll, we'll credit that one as a run since it was a... A backwards pass. And third down and seven for the Bobcats. Go ahead, Calvin. Tough spot for the Bobcats, but we'll see what they can do here. Looks like a pass. Two receivers split out each direction. Davis at Case at James's right hip. Buckeye Valley showing blitz. James takes the toe-high snap. He's going to run up the middle. He's to the 45. Makes a man miss 50. 45. He's inside the 40. He's brought down at the 38-yard line of Buckeye Valley. That's a big scamper there for Charlie James. And a first down for Grandview Heights. And then, yeah, Charlie and then, has really, really good speed uh, when he can get into space like he did there. And... A huge 20-yard run on third and long. That gives the Bobcats over 100 yards rushing on the day. 39 for James, 43 for Davis so far. I just had a low brightness to like say battery. All right. Until the game. Clock starts to run again. Six, and, six minutes and change left here in the third stands. The Cats lead 7-3. to three. James in the shotgun. Trips wide to the right. Luke Lachey wide to the left. Davis in the shotgun with James. And hand off to Darion. Breaks a tackle. And he dives down to the 31-yard line of Buckeye Valley. Yeah, and once Darion can get past that first line that they have, he can... He can get some yards for sure, like he did there on that six-yard gain. Officially, he's marked down at the 32-yard line, so give Darion six on the play, and it's now second down and four. Bobcats line up Sterniker and Lachey wide to the left. 
and that's Cribs and Culp wide to the right. Davis in the shotgun with James. James takes a snap, handoff middle to Davis, no room as he's flung down at the 32 yard line, the line of scrimmage for no gain, and it's third down. Yeah, it looks like a loss of <laughs> oh, Kevin Richards right in front of the stands. He is throwing out free broads to people. Man, he still got it. This dude, Kevin Richards, he can still sling him. And so can Chris Jagers is trying to replicate his efforts, but there's no one like Kevin Richards in that regard. But back to football here. Two receivers split out left and right. Davis in the backfield in the shotgun with James. James calls for the snap a couple times, takes a snap, pumps, rolls to his right. He's in trouble. He's trapped and sacked at the 44-yard line. Yeah, he did his uh, best to avoid a stack <laughs> sack there, but could not do anything as Bratwurst are flying all around. <laughs> straight at us. Yeah, two rows in front of us. It's like, it's like reaching for a foul ball. Here's Chris Jagers, pop pass there, nice catch. Richards throws one into the student section. Again, he throws one to a band member. Richards lobs one underhand into the third row. <laughs> back to football here, McCormick to punt. One man back to return, that's Ash for Buckeye Valley. It's a short end over end kick. It bounces sideways inside the 20 yard line and Jack Rickert, the freshman, is there to down it for the Bobcats at the 20. Is he still throwing them? No, they... Uh, oh, come on! They ran out of bratwurst to throw, Murphy. They exhausted their supply. Yep. But quietly, there's only 3.58 left here in the third quarter. First and 10, Buckeye Valley at their own 20-yard line. Anthony in the, in the gun with Ash in the backfield. Two receivers stacked to the right, to the left, one wide to the right. Anthony takes a snap. He throws it left, and he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage there. That's Glenn Cribbs who got him, and that's a two-yard loss on first and 10. Yeah, Glenn did a beautiful job shaking off a block by the other receiver <laughs> Melissa, all over that. I was talking to Melissa Cribbs when I was going down the stands at halftime. She made sure I mentioned that play he made on the Hail Mary there. But Glenn Cribbs, I mean, Trey Cook will get all the accolades tonight, but don't sleep on Glenn Cribbs. He's having a good game himself. Anthony in the pistol, in the shot, that's the pistol with Ash in the backfield. He takes a snap, a handoff middle to Ash. Ash to the 20, and he lunges forward to about the 24-yard line, and it's third down. And with that, the, uh, the Barons eclipse 100 yards on the ground, and at the same time, the Bobcats went under 100 yards on that sack. Third down and seven for Buckeye Valley at their own 24-yard line. Two receivers in a wing to the right, one receiver wide to the left. Anthony takes a snap. He rolls to his right. He throws down the field, tipped up in the air, and intercepted. No, it ain't. no, James trapped it. James trapped it. It hit the ground just before he could get, he could get his hands under the ball there. Bobcat fans don't like the call. The student section giving him some grief. Uh, I, for one, agree with the uh, referee there. Looked like it hit the ground, of course. Hard to tell from here. Almost a, almost a great interception there by Charlie James. But Andre Ash to punt here for Buckeye Valley. Darion Davis and Charlie James standing at the Buckeye Valley 45 to return. It's a head-high snap. He sends a good driving punt. It bounces, takes a Buckeye Valley bounce. This is a good punt. And, <laughs> and, 
Indiana tried to tried to go with the human windmill there and try and push the ball further down the field, but his efforts were futile as he downs the ball at the 29-yard line. That's still a very good punt there for Andre Ash. 46 yards. Had a very end over end, very nice return. Glad, just glad it didn't hit any Bobcats on the way because looked close to someone. 2.20 left in the third quarter. James in the gun. He takes a snap. A handoff middle to Davis. Davis to the 30, trying to stay on his feet as he is stuffed at the 32-yard line by a pack of Barons there. So give Davis three on the play, and it's second and seven. Second down and seven for the Bobcats at their own 32-yard line. They line up two receivers split out wide each direction. James in the shotgun with Davis to his left hip. Charlie takes a shotgun snap. Looks, throws left, caught by Lachey, turns up field to the 35, tries to dance around a defender, and he is stopped at the 35-yard line. One twenty left here in the third quarter. This has been a very quick game, quick third quarter. Third down and four and three for the Bobcats at their own 36-yard line. James in the shotgun with Davis to his right. Two receivers split out wide to the left, two wide to the right. Motion Lachey. Lachey gets the handoff on the end around, but as he gets the handoff, a flag flew. So that's a procedure penalty on the Bobcats. I think that may only be the second penalty of the game. <laughs> not, not a lot of penalties here today. And that's a big penalty. So what was a, a situation where you could run the ball in third and three turns into a probable passing down for the Bobcats here. Same formation, two receivers each direction. Davis in the backfield. James calls the snap multiple times, takes a shotgun snap. He's pressured. He rolls to his right. He's got Lachey open. He makes a catch at the 50. And he <laughs> stays on his feet. He dives down to the 41. Oh, he just couldn't maintain his balance there because if he did, he would have found Pater. But another great play for Luke. Yeah, uh, he had one defender on him. And uh, had he made it by him, I'm sure he would have scored a touchdown there. Yep. 12 seconds left in the third quarter. Bobcats get to the line of scrimmage. Trips wide to the left. Luke Lachey wide to the right. James in the shotgun with Davis. Charlie takes a snap, hands it off to Davis. He may have gotten one there. It's good containment by the Buckeye Valley defensive line as we, as we reach the end of the third quarter. Well, it's a very defensive game here. 7-3 to three Bobcats at the end of the third frame. You've been watching a presentation of Bobcats football on ghathletics.org. Stay tuned for the exciting finish.
Start of the fourth quarter, second down and nine for the Bobcats at the 39-yard line. James in the gun, Davis in the backfield, Sterniker the wing on the left side. James the keeper, he's looking for the left corner, he doesn't have it as he may have gone to the 35 there. But good containment by the end of the Barons line. Three yard game for... Yeah, so give Chucky three yards on the play there. And it's third and six. Still a very doable third down. Yep. Third, and five for the Cats. third down and five and a half for the Grandview Bobcats. James is in an empty set. Two receivers wide to the left. Trips wide far side to the right. They send Davis in motion. James the keeper. He has the first down. A flag flies as he's brought down the 27-yard line. But this one might be coming back. And it looks like a block in the back on uh, Luke Lachey. Uh, yeah, uh, huge block by Luke, but just got a little bit of his back, it looked like, kind of on the side, maybe on the back. All right, probably the right call there. And be third and very long for... Bobcats, but I'd imagine this is fourth down territory if they can get it within like six or seven yards here. Yep. Well, it's third down and about 18 for the Bobcats. James in the shotgun, two receivers split out left and right. Davis in the backfield. Charlie takes a shotgun snap. He's back to throw. A pop screen to Davis. Davis gets a block, 45-40. 35 outside, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Grandview Heights. Darion Davis, a 40-yard touchdown on the screen pass. Oh, that play worked to perfection, and the Bobcats lead 13-3. to Absolutely beautiful work by Darion. You know, I feel like that might be the third or fourth time we've run it this season, and it hasn't worked up to this point. It's worked in prior years, and here it works like a charm. An absolute beauty by Darion Davis and some great blocking, too. In Grand, everybody in Grandview football knows about that play. Mason Gustazi on to attempt the extra point. Snap back, hold down. The kick is up, and Gustazi blasts it through, and the Bobcats lead 14-3. A much well, kick. that kick did not have white paint on it. He nailed that one. So a 48-yard catch and run for Darion Davis. I'm telling you, it was all that block on the left side of the line there. Great blocking by the line, Calvin. Yeah, great blocking the line. By the line and also some great blocking downfield too. It was just great blocking all all around and a beautifully executed play by the Bobcats. So with the so with the the, the Randy Moss type catch by Luke Lachey and the forty eight yard catch and run on the screen pass by Darion Davis. The Cats they only, they, they've always scored two touchdowns, but those two touchdowns produce some fireworks here tonight. The junior Matthew Taylor to kick off. He kicks a line drive kick. He bobbles it, picks it up at the 32. He's to the 35, running around looking for the far side, and he can't get there as he's cut down at the 38-yard line. Yeah, I think that that player number 52 has uh, received all of the kickoffs. Strangely enough, despite yep. not being a deep man. Jake Leach with the tackle as Kevin Reedy exuberantly announces over over the PA system here. Anthony in the gun. He takes a snap. Quarterback draw. He's to the 35, right side 40. Bounces off his own man. And as he spins his way to the 45, he got the first down. 
So that's 10 yards for Anthony on the play. And it's a first down for the Barons. Glenn Cribbs with the tackle. Both teams have been fairly effective with the quarterback yep. runs. And Anthony again is in the empty set here. Trips wide to the left, too wide short side to the right. Anthony takes a shotgun snap, a quarterback draw. He's to the 45-50, and he lunges his way to the Grandview 45. He got the first down. Pretty similar play to the first play of the drive there, Calvin. Yeah, almost the exact same play, and both for basically exactly 10 yards. And with 10, 10 30 left in the uh, game, the Buckeyes game has kicked off for all you Buckeyes fans. Up. <laughs> Anthony in the shotgun with Ash in the backfield. Handoff to, no, Anthony keeps it. He's to the 40, and again he dives his way to the 35-yard line, he got the first down. Hey, is that another 10-yard run there? A hat trick of 10 oh, yards. would you believe it? It is. <laughs> Three straight exact first downs. He has a hat trick. Yep. First and 10, Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 35. Barron's trail 14-3 with 940 left here in the fourth quarter. Anthony in the pistol with Ash in the backfield. Three receivers wide to the left, one wide to the right. He takes a snap, throws right, it's caught, and he's immediately tackled there by Glenn Cribbs. Nice play there by Glenn. Second down and two for Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 27. Anthony in the gun, two, three receivers wide to the left, one wide, to, two, two wide to the right. Anthony takes a snap. He rolls to his right. He's got the corner. Bobcats want to hold. He's to the 25, and he is out of bounds at the 23. No call. Bobcat fans desperately wanted it, but yeah, nothing cool. called. Hold's not going to be called, but I do think that they may have gotten away with one there to put it. And that's another first down for Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 23. And the Eight. streak of 10-yard runs ends for... Cats have played great bend but don't break defense all year, and they need it now. Th first down and 10, Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 22. Anthony in the pistol, Ash in the backfield. Handoff middle to Ash. He is stood up at the 22-yard line. Nothing there as, as he tried to shake loose there on the third effort, but forward progress already rules him down at the line of scrimmage. And it's second down and 10. Fourteen to three, the Bobcats lead here. Eight minutes and 20 ticks left here in the fourth quarter. Ian Gesha with the tackle. Second down and 10 at the 22. Anthony in the shotgun. He takes the snap. He's back to throw. Steps, fires, dropped. He's trying to find a man on up the right seam there, but pass hit him right in the hands. He should have hauled that in. Yeah, that's one you definitely say uh, should have been caught, but looked like it. Bounce off him, maybe his chest as he was going down. and Makes it third and, and ten. Scott Steck was the intended receiver. He's had a couple receptions tonight. Mm -hmm. Third down and ten. Buckeye Valley at the Grandview 22. Big play as the Barons trail by 11. Two receivers wide each direction. Anthony takes a snap. He throws right side. He's got a man towards the pylon. It's caught. No, incomplete. It's incomplete as I guess they really didn't hang on to the ball there. 
It's fourth and ten. I thought he hauled that in. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, it squeaked out. Great defense by uh, great defense by Trey Cook. And they're going to attempt a field goal here. Felipe Scharf made a 36-yard kick earlier. So now he's 30. on to attempt a, f let's call it a 40-yard kick here. Slight angle to the right here. Anthony Hughes, the backup quarterback to hold. S low snap, and Anthony gets up, and he is body slammed by Davis at the 37-yard line. That'll be a loss of loss of 13. There's, there's a good reason why you have the quarterback there, but he could not stop a charging Davis as that's a huge stop for the Bobcats. And again, Calvin, the bend but don't break defense for Grandview Heights. Yeah, it's been huge all year. First and 10 Bobcats at their own 35 yard line. James in the gun, three receivers wide to the two receivers wide to the right. Motion by McCormick. James, the quarterback draw, doesn't have a lot of room as he maneuvers his way to the 40 37. That's all he'll get. Yeah, and Bobcats up by 11 with 7.30 left to go. This drive, they could really uh, put this game out of reach yep. with a score, or even if they take, take enough take time. Take a lot of clock. time. Cats have a, a two-score lead with 7.20 left in the fourth quarter. Second down and eight for the Bobcats, their own 37-yard line. One wide to the right, trips wide to the left. Davis in the backfield with James. Charlie takes a snap. Fakes the handoff, keeps it, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line. That's a two-yard loss, and it's third and ten. Yeah, I tried the same play twice and didn't wasn't really effective either time. And it'll end up in a third and ten here. And a touchdown. For the Ohio, Ohio State, State Justin Fields, 20-yard strike to Chris Olave, and the Buckeyes take a 6-0 lead in Evanston. Now back to Grandview, 3rd and 10 for the Bobcats, their own 35-yard line. Two receivers split out left and right, Davis in the backfield with James. And on 3rd and 10, a handoff to Davis. Davis doesn't have any rooms. He's bottled up behind the line of scrimmage. He's trying to make some hay on the second effort. Then he's pushed back. But it's fourth and long for the Bobcats. Grandview will punt here. As Blake Hobbiel's kick is up and good, and the Buckeyes take a 7 to nothing lead. Right now on the campus of Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. But we still have football left here in Grandview. 5.50 left here in the fourth quarter. Connor McCormick to punt. It's a head-high snap. McCormick, a spinning line drive kick. It bounces, takes a grand view roll. It's picked up at the 31-yard line. He's to the 35-40. Stays on his feet, lost the football. It's loose at the 40-yard line, and I believe Buckeye Valley dove on it at their own 38. Yeah. Uh, he got uh, absolutely destroyed there on that hit, popped the ball out. And it looks like... Buckeye Valley managed to recover that ball. And the sideline warning is called against Grandview Heights. Oh, will the tradition did not die after all as the Bobcats get another sideline warning. First and 10 for Buckeye Valley as they're at their own 38 yard line as Kevin Reedy announces the Ohio State score over the PA system. Anthony in the shotgun with Ash at his right hip. Two receivers split out left and right. 529 left in the fourth quarter. Anthony takes the shotgun snap. He's in the pocket, being chased by Bertani. Starts up the middle, he's to the 35-40 and he gets to the 44 yard line. 
Great composure there by Anthony in the pocket. Yeah, very good work by Anthony there to preserve, uh, prevent a massive loss and turn it into a six yard gain. Second down and four for Buckeye Valley at their own 44 yard line. They have to hurry up as time is running out. Anthony takes the snap, ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Pass was intended for number 22. I'm trying to find his name on the roster here. And it's third and four. 4.49 left here in the fourth quarter. Big third down play as Grandview leads 14 to three. Two receivers split out left and right. He takes a snap. He keeps, he's running right. Tries to cut up the middle as he's brought down at the 42 yard line by Joey Bertani on his senior night. Or his final home game is the, the football senior night was last week but Great job by Joey Bertain to make a play in his final home game. Yeah, booming hit by, by Bertain there. Fourth down and five. You think Buckeye Valley has to go for it here. Yeah, this might, this just might be, be the game. ball game. Anthony in the shotgun with Ash at his left hip. Three receivers wide to the left, one wide to the right. He takes a snap. He's rolling to his left. Looking down the field. Throws incomplete. No flags. And the Bobcats take over on downs. He was looking for his fellow quarterback slash wide receiver Anthony Hughes on the play. But it was incomplete. And the Bobcats take over on downs. 14-3, Grandview leads. Buckeye Valley still has three timeouts. Yeah. Grandview can finish it here. A couple of first downs. And A score would no doubt put this one out of reach. Two men in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the right. Luke Lachey wide to the left. James calls for the snap. Hands it off on the counter to Davis. Davis looking for the corner, and he rolls his way to the 42-yard line as he could not find the edge there as Buckeye Valley will burn their timeouts here as the clock stops here with 345 left here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, um, one thing of note so far is that... Uh, Charlie James's passing totals have actually been really, really good this game. Uh, if you look at the stats, he's uh, four of seven for 106 yards and two touchdowns, no interceptions. Very good stat line, especially for a backup quarterback, kind of on emergency duty. But he's been, they've made it easy for him and he's, uh, he's capitalized on his opportunities. Yep. Buckeye Valley, this is their first year in the mid-state league Ohio division. They were originally in the mid, they just left the Mid-Ohio Athletic Conference, which features a bunch of schools from Northern Ohio. Grandview and Buckeye Valley were actually in two different divisions of the same league from 1976 to 1990. And this is the first time these two teams have faced off since 1986, a game Grandview Heights won. Two men in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the right, one wide to the left. James takes a snap. He keeps the handoff. He gets to the 40. He stopped there. And Buckeye Valley calls their second timeout. And it's now third and seven. Yeah. Uh, I mean, clearly this has been a very defensive contest. And it being such, Davis hasn't been as effective on the ground as he's been in prior games. Uh, he's... 52 yards on 13 carries, so four yards per carry. But he still still had some very nice runs today, but they've also stuffed a lot of runs. Uh, not really his fault, but 
Uh, it just shows how both of these defensive have both of these defenses have been very strong. Buckeye Valley, they face a lot of stiff competition. They're they'll get better. Buckeye Valley, they get out of their second timeout. Third down and seven for the Bobcats at Buckeye Valley's 40-yard line. Two men in the backfield, Davis and Cook. Actually, that's, Stern, that's Sterniker and Davis. The Cats are trying to get Buckeye Valley to jump there, but... Those efforts backfired as Grandview Heights moved early, and it's now third and 12. Yeah, and that's their third offensive procedure penalty. Uh, fortunately, so far they haven't really come back to bite them yet. And actually, the only other uh, penalty, the Lou Cliche 10 yard block in the back, actually led to the Darion Davis 40, 48 yard screen pass reception for a touchdown. Cats put James in the shotgun here. Davis and Sterniker in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the right, one near side to the left. James calls for the snap multiple times, and he hands it off. No, he keeps it. He's to the 45, down to the 43, and it's fourth down. Buckeye Valley calls their final timeout with 3.33 left here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that drive could have gone better for the Bobcats. So first down would have been huge, but... Uh, Buckeye Valley now has three minutes and 33 seconds to get 11 points with no timeout. So Bobcat's still in a very favorable position, especially considering this offense for Buckeye Valley has not moved the ball downfield fast at any point in this And you'd game. assume that Grandview Heights would want to punt here. And you would also assume that Buckeye Valley will be coming after the punt hard. Yeah, but Cats could potentially pin them very deep. That's what you're going to try to do if you're Grandview Heights. Connor McCormick is out on the field. Grandview Heights is going to punt. Andre Ash, the lone man back to return for Buckeye Valley. Buckeye Valley will be coming after the punt. It's a knee-high snap. McCormick gets it off. Ash catches it at the 16, he's to the 20, a flag flies, and tries to rumble his way, and he's down at the 29 yard line, and we'll check the flag here. Yeah, solid 27 yards for McCormick inside the 20, uh, and that flag uh, will likely be very good for the, very good for the Bobcats. Assuming it is a holding or a block on the back. And, and the indication hold. is a hold on Buckeye Valley. And they'll start at their own 14 yard line. So. They have a long way to march here with no timeouts and 3.20 left here in the fourth quarter. Bobcats not playing press coverage, only a three-man front. Anthony takes the shotgun snap. He's in the pocket. He heaves one down the right side and a double coverage incomplete. He was looking for his running back, Andre Ash. Throws into double coverage. Corey Culp and Charlie James were back there, and it's incomplete. Yeah, very well defense pass by the Buckeyes. Had the Buckeyes. Men. Buckeyes. Uh, I'm almost ready to yeah. focus on them. But it's a but double game night. Pass. Double game night. Very, very strange. Two receivers wide to the right, trips wide to the left. Only a three-man front for Grandview Heights. Cats playing prevent defense. So draw up the middle. He's to the 15. Now he's down at the 20 as the clock will continue to run here. 
Just a hair over three minutes left in the fourth quarter. Buckeye Valley trails by 11. They have the ball at their own 19-yard line. Now they go to the hurry-up offense. Anthony in, in the shotgun, third and five. He takes the snap. He's back to throw. He throws over the middle, nearly intercepted, incomplete. Pass broken up there by Corey Culp, and it's fourth and five, and a chance to seal the deal here for Grandview Heights. Yeah, some more good pass defense. Uh, unsure about the play call before that one. A uh, five-yard draw on your own 14, down 11 is not really what you're looking for in a time-sensitive situation, but huge play here. Anthony in the gun, Ash in the backfield. Two receivers wide to the right, one wide to the left. This is the game. Anthony takes the shotgun snap. He's back to throw. Throws over the middle. It's dropped and incomplete. And that should do it. Yeah, a Bob four and out for Buckeye Valley. And the Bobcats will take over on downs. Buckeye Valley has no timeouts with 2.44 left in the fourth. Yeah, the... Bobcats may need a uh, first down to uh, get this game all the way to double zeros. Yep. But no matter what, this uh, should be uh, essentially the end of the yep. game. Buckeye Valley will almost definitely not have enough time to get 11 points, barring any turnovers. Yep, it would. So, barring something crazy, barring something that we'll remember forever, the Bobcats will hang on and move to 6-2. and two. Hand off middle to Davis. He's to the 15. He's inside the 10. He's got the first down. And that'll kill a lot of the clock. Yeah, nice 12-yard run for Darion Davis there. The Bobcats, 2.37 left in the fourth. They'll not have to snap the ball for another 40 seconds. And... You imagine that Grandview will be in no hurry to do so. As Kevin Reedy thanks Jim Gloyd and Chuck Amicon for all the work they do up here in the booth. As we get a shout out by Kevin Reedy. Under two minutes left here in the fourth quarter. James in the shotgun. He takes a snap, hands it off to Davis. Davis hit at the line of scrimmage for no gain. And I'll go through what Kevin Reedy just did for our team. Special thanks to Jake Smith and Ben McCullough who've, who've joined in on a couple broadcasts this year. Jake did a great job. It was great to see Ben fill in for a game. Thanks to John Sterniker, our production assistant. He, he does a great job making this program run. Thanks to Calvin Horning, our stats guy, sometimes our color analyst, as he's done a great job all year giving the halftime stats, and he's done an okay job on the air. <laughs> yeah, you've done fine. Uh, thanks. Very high praise, I guess. I guess. My brother. Uh, always happy to be here. Yep. Always happy to be here. James takes a snap in out of what Paul Keels would call the genuflect offense. James takes the knee at the 11-yard line to signal the end of what was a very strong, very hard-fought 14-3 victory here for Grandview Heights. We will have the remainder of our broadcast, the two road broadcasts to end the year, and, our, and any postseason broadcast will be audio only. So this is the final time you'll get to see the great camera work of John Sterniker on a football broadcast this year as Charlie James takes a knee, and that's the game. Final score, Bobcats 14, Buckeye Valley 3. Buckeye Valley drops to 0 and 8. Grandview improves to 6 and 2. Grandview just beat a D3 team. Currently they are fourth in the Joe Aitel rankings for their region. And they might gain some points here tonight. If the playoffs started today, Grammy Heights would be home against Arcanum High School. We'll emphasize this a lot more in the last two weeks. But we hope you join us next week at Colum from Ke Gehanna against Columbus Academy in what will be... You, ne you never know when the Bobcats face the Vikings. You never know. 
and we certainly don't know what we're going to see next week, which is why I'm looking forward to calling that one, and I hope you all tune in. But Grandview improves to 6-2. and two. Cats' remaining schedule is at Columbus Academy and at Bishop Reedy. The game against Reedy is in Obetz, Ohio, but we will have the audio commentary for both games. But once again, the final score tonight, the Grandview Bobcats 14, the Buckeye Valley Barons 3. For John Sterniker and Calvin Horning, I'm Murphy. Oh, oh we got to do the stats. I almost, ju I ju almost jumped the gun there. Yeah, uh, someone wants to go to the Buck uh, go watch the Buckeyes game. But, uh, <laughs> great game on defense for the Buckeyes. Uh, you're not wrong. Especially in coverage. Uh, 134 yards on the ground for Buckeye Valley. Uh, Anthony was the leading rusher with uh, 16 carries for 85 yards. Uh, he was only 8 of 23 with one interception passing. Very good coverage. Uh, and Bobcats, uh, Darion Davis leading rusher. 15 carries for 64 yards, 120 total yards on the ground. Uh, and Charlie James had a had some great uh, passing, <laughs> four of seven for 106 yards and two touchdowns. That's all the stats I have for you. And we'll leave it at that. I, I won't.